Hello everyone and welcome back to another commentary episode session thingy stuff. Now this one is a bit special because it's post commentary and I'm basically doing naked unembered calamate ring PvP. So I do this Yeah those fuck ups happen and you will get one shot. I'm doing this because the game is a bit too less of a challenge, I think, sometimes, especially also in PvP. And to make it a bit more challenging, I'm doing that stuff, so I basically get one or two shot. And this is nice because you actually then have to watch out and not do the dirty normal Dark Souls 3 PvP that you would often do, like the trades and stuff. And what I mean with dirty is not necessarily like just our one spamming and stuff but also um hyper armor like you would use a halberd and just spam our one in the face until they got hype uh, until they run into your hyper armor and then trade with them and to prevent that kind of dirty playstyle and get a bit back to the dark souls 2 mentality of like not get hit and play pretty clean and stuff and win a fight with that i'm using the setup so i cannot trade with anything. I have my plow, which is one of the best spares, if not the best spare in this game, because it has the most reach and good damage. And with that plow I played a, a PvP like Dark Souls 2. Basically, um, a lot of run attacks, spacing, pa um, roll punishes are really easy and really good with the spear actually. And yeah, that's why I'm using this. And a lot of people get upset. I actually got more hate mail in this session than on all other PvPs I PvP sessions I did and all other playstyles I had. And it's kind of strange because this is like I have to play perfectly and when people get flawless or when you just don't get hit by people then they especially get upset real quick. So I don't know. I can definitely recommend for everyone to use the weapon that you are the most familiar with and just go out there and challenge yourself. That's always how you get better in the game. Now this guy, let's go to the fights real quick. This guy has a, a red tear stone mode character which should one shot me, like everything one shots. So that's an advantage for me because he has a slow weapon and he, will, he cannot trade actually. And I would get one shot anyways by this weapon, so yeah. Like there I thought the fight was over because that was actually a pretty clean one shot. And yeah, a uh, pretty clean uh, roll catch, I mean, not one shot, but kill, hit. Now, <laughs> on ultras you can only really get hit if you fuck up bad. Now, with this one you can stay out of reach of pretty much every ultra, only attack like I did there right after they come out of their hit which will stagger them or before they hit you which will stagger them and like there I fucked up I just tried to attack when they when he attacked and he can trade with that because the damage on the plow is good but not too great and yeah never trade with this build and that's nice that's a really nice thing and of course I could also just use a uh, red uh, make myself low on HP to red tier stone mode, but that's really bad because I tried that and people were like super tryhardy and instantly pulled out firebombs and throwing knives and cheesed me with that all the time and then you just get hit because when they pull the cheese off you most likely get hit. So that was quite a problem. So I try. I thought of this game mode kind of and this is really fun and really really fun and really challenging and quite a nice way to pvp after like you can just run around with washing po washing poles all day and like play blind pvp just with our ones and yeah also a reason why i picked the spear the four pronged plow is because the r2s you will actually use the r2 button for one when they are parry happy and you do the running attack, the running R2, uh, which is a very long ranging thrust and will actually roll catch when they roll away, like panic roll from your running R1 
and you can just mix it up with an running R2 and they get roll caught, which you will see a few times in this video. Now this guy results to swapping out his ultra greatsword, I think was it, or something slower weapon to a katana, after which it becomes like a, just a spinning game. <laughs> Who attacks first and I will also always be able to reaction roll on his katana, which is like no problem. This guy, typical buffed ultra greatsword, just don't, like I did there, fuck up. <laughs> I just misjudged the um, range. Normally that would, that must have been like one pixel away from the hitbox actually, because normally that was the hitbox of the plow. The timing of the attack itself was timed properly, like directly between the ultra greatsword hits, where they don't have hyper armor and they get knocked out of their animation. So yeah, the second R1 was stalled up, and so I executed the second R1, which was a trade, and I got killed. Now this guy does his normal L1 spins, but not only that, which is surprising and cool of him to actually use a Farron Greatsword in some movesets, but that's really nice with this weapon. You can outspeed and outrange people. You don't have hyper arm, but you don't need hyper armor anyways with this build, because you won't trade. And that's nice, like you just have to play pretty much perfectly. And this build is also, like I said, in contrast to the Red Tearstone Ring PvP, where you do basically the same, but get one shot of everything, also consumables. In contrary to that, it's um, better, because they won't be able to one shot you, given they can four shot you or something with consum consumables, but yeah, whatever. This guy had. Uh, um, we will see later in this fight what he does. He got pissed off because I attacked him in his buff, but when I saw his build I was like, okay, you have a shield, and there he goes, chuck, chuck, chuck. Chucks everything, gets backstabbed, and that was a bit backstab. So, yeah, he got upset that I attacked him in his buff, but, you know, got to take what you can get and go away. GG, you just um, pretty much healed and crystalled and lost against the unembered Calamite playing PvP guy. Well, whatever. The plow is also only on plus 9. Now this guy likes to stay in my face, get hit and then just hyper armor trade, which doesn't work out. He also likes to just turn around all the time and spam R1, like you should <laughs> in this game. And yeah, he's pretty much I can pretty much outrange even his greatsword, which is really nice with this build. So what I'm doing now is just like, I can't really attack first because he will be able to pretty much trade it. And what I did there was roll, uh, like roll, I never do roll attacks pretty much. And because he knew I wouldn't do a roll attack and he parried my R1, I pressed L1, like the block, and then R1. Like I did in Dark Souls 2 all the time when I want to roll catch someone with a spear. And that's nice that spears actually work the same way as in Dark Souls 2. Now what I do here, just look. That was the most stup stupidest thing ever done by anyone. Like of course this thing's spin has hyper armor and of course I won't be able to knock them out of that and I get killed for that. Now this was the one fight that I put in where I fought Red Tearstone Ring type of this PvP. Um, which was nice that this guy didn't um, pull out consumables instantly. Of course, he got an offense sisters, which you have to be careful of, because they will spam parries quite a lot. And of course they can. There's an obligatory spike. And R1, R1. I outrange his R1s. And yeah, how can we get him low? Just wait a bit, don't be too impatient, and there he starts. He noticed that he can't really get me into trades in his reach, so he will just spam firebombs, which is like not a bad thing to do against this build, generally, because they do a lot of damage. They do as, like, of course I applaud for this great tactic, but there we go. <laughs> nice one. I get, had an other guy that did the same, like had an ultra great axe and changed to spam firebombs and he actually got me because he was quite um, high on health still started spamming firebombs and 
I want I had to like get low on uh, I had to get just the last hit in and he was able to spam a firebomb and press a one to actually trade that last hit with me and he, uh, he killed me then so consumables are really good against this build against this of course I get salty as fuck when people use consumables but yeah Now this guy has seized this and quite a bit of latency. Normally I, oh, I should say what fights put in I put in here because they are. This is of course edited. I didn't put all the wins. I didn't put all the losses, but I did put all the fights that were actually okayish connection, good enough connection to see what I did wrong and what I could do against the builds. And so yeah. This is edited, but those are all the fights that actually meant something. Now this one, he has a bleed build, and with this character I have, with this Calamit PvP, it's the best to fight against bleed builds, because they have to be super aggressive, which they then will make mistakes, because you will definitely be more passive with your getting one-shot PvP. And since they have to like get the bleed build up, because otherwise they won't do really any damage, like you saw that guy, like just did normal damage of some other weapons like if I would have normal HP. So they have to be extremely ag aggressive, they won't one shot you and that's that's like the perfect build to fight against or the perfect thing to fight against with this build while you get one shot. Now shields and halberds and stuff are of course really really powerful like they always were also against this build pretty much <laughs> nice partial parry there. He got, he went for the last panic parry, and the R2 uh, was almost got parry. Now this is the prin twin prince's greatsword, and especially this attack, I g I got hit, but that was just my fuck up. Normally you just expect that attack. You don't attack out of the blue. Just make yourself vulnerable because that attack is really quick, and that's why I poke roll away, and like play safe a bit. Now there comes the attack again, I, I can just roll away. So this is just like super good to practice. And what I did there was general normal Dark Souls 2 roll catches. Like it always was with spears. R1, R1, let them recover and panic roll to the side of you. If they are still in reach, they fucked up and you will press L1 to like block, to actually delay your attack and then press R1, R1 and roll catch them, which is great with spears. Now this guy has the best cosplay ever, <laughs> Harvel Jester of Dark Souls 2. He would be better if he had a buckler and a chaos blade, but nevertheless, th this is this is just the best cosplay ever. I've never laughed as much as at that fight. And yeah, I can't say it enough. This is really enjoyable. To the um, things, to the normal live sessions, of course, they will continue, and I will continue with the other rec requested weapons. I won't only do like what I want all the time with like with this session, um, but it will be a bit differently. I usually said I once said that it will be completely from chronologically when someone requested stuff, but it won't be like that. I will always pull to a poll and like do it random which requested weapon will appear and which I will use because otherwise it would be unfair to the people who request weapons on the newer videos. Now this guy got upset. Ah, I should just finish my thought. <laughs> um, it would be unfair to the people who actually request weapons on the newer videos because their weapon would come like 10 videos later or 20 videos later and that would like totally be bad. But I will do a poll. Now that guy before pulled out a sh shield and a an rapier because he didn't uh, wanted to lose against someone who plays naked with calamity ring and spear and unemboled but whatever. It's his thing. I fucked up in the end because I couldn't win against his shield poke. But yeah, whatever. There yeah, I used an R2 which should this R1 that he did should have roll caught me would have been just fair. Was a nice guess there rolling through and row catching me. Now oh, here, yeah, that was... And here's the R2. The R2 is really, really nice. On this weapon, it's actually 
could be one of my favorite weapons in this game. Might actually go away from like when I want to play with just chill and play and kill everyone. I usually take out the washing pole and just spam run attacks and once. And with this weapon, with the plow, this is also possible and it's not as scrubby and it actually looks cool and stuff. So yeah, I will take that. That guy, quick step sp uh, spammer. Uh, can't say much to that, he's just the quick step spammer. Mage build. Whatever. Have to deal with that somehow. And usually I take that with a delayed R1 spam, but here I use an R2. Get the nice counter hit, normally he wouldn't have hit me, because the latency was pretty high, he got the hit through. Was an undeserved one, but I didn't die in the end, so it wasn't like really bad. But yeah, quick steps, use R2s, or delay your R1 attacks. But when you delay your R1s, they most likely will be able to just quick step again. But they also don't have infinite stamina, so whatever. Now this guy started the fight and then realized he had to buff, which was nice. And now he pulls out his sick tactics, L2. Oh nice, nice L2s. No. Uh, there's another L2, almost got me that L2. That does, those parries are like six skills. And there's another L2, didn't see that coming at all, which is why it was unpunishable. Clap, clap, clap. And yeah, let's see how much L2 he got. And L2, no, no, there's the L2. That was, that was a nice L2, and that too, that almost got me, almost parried me, bro. Very good. And against this guy, this was the only guy that I wanted to finish with Kukri. <laughs> Kukri's, I could have also just hit R1 because Kukri's also slow. I just ha could have just run attacked. Um, which is why I didn't think Kukri's were too unfair in this situation, but I just wanted to humiliate him. Because he, he got nice L2s. L2s are really just amazing, you know? Which is also nice, because on this build you won't be parrying at all. Because one fucked up parry or one portal and you're dead. So just... Oh, yeah, I'm dead. That was a pretty bad place to do an R1, just right in his face. If I have reach, I should also use that reach. Now that guy is pretty honorable. <laughs> honorable. Chuck, 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 dual bow. Uh, but never forget your buff. <laughs> at one point I was like, okay. Fuck off, <laughs> I will just attack you. <laughs> you get your buff, you one shot me anyway, so I get a bit of damage in at all. And there's a bit of our ones and roll catch. Not, wasn't um, too good on the roll catch from me. And he has his sisters, which I have to be really careful when I place my running attacks and our ones. I just there, he was clearly vulnerable and. Yeah, he almost got the parry there. Like, <laughs> pretty, pretty close. Now, I can't really say much more than, yeah, this is just how the game is when you play perfectly. You will use our ones, you will use the strengths of your weapons, and if you play perfectly like this, you will just do our ones all the time to roll catch or spam running our ones to do our ones and our ones and our ones. But that's just how it is, we have to accept it. It's extremely simplified, but that's just how it is. So, yeah, and this is pretty much how you would play when you, or how I would play when I would try, try hard. <laughs> As literally trying hard to not get actually hit. And I got hit there, didn't do too much damage, I guess it's not plus. 10 his Carthus that should have actually like and that's the running R2 again which is really nice whoops sorry for that noise yeah and now we are coming to the last glory fight and what he does bam offensive spell this is an offensive spell okay it's not a passive buff and even if it were I'm allowed or I will attack during your buff because buffs give you a damage boost. So this guy starts chugging and running away just to get his nice crystal soul mass, <laughs> crystal homing soul mass in, which is of course totally important and totally viable, because if he wouldn't have that, he clearly would have a disadvantage on the fight. 
he needs that homing soul mass at the beginning of the fight and his weapon buff. Otherwise he won't won't stand a chance. Because homing soul mass is totally not a thing that you can just sidestep. <laughs> my lord. That guy actually wrote hate mail to me because I started chugging in this fight. Now of this situation that you see right now he started chugging of course. I attacked him while he used after he used homing soul mass because that started the fight. And he got mad and healed and ran away. Which made the fight uh, of course to my advantage because I'm the host and I have more Estus. Of course I'm still Calamite and Unembered and stuff but who cares. I can use Estus when I want at this point. Now later, because I just teased him a bit here because of his magic that I can just <laughs> avoid. Later he wrote hate mail, start saying oh you are so unhonorable and stuff attacking me while I buff and then start chugging. Uh, yeah bro, keep on dreaming. <laughs> the fuck, like I don't even care anymore. <laughs> Which was nice because I haven't gotten any hate mail up to that point. Which is just <laughs> glorious hate mail. But whatever. He, he, he is clearly a honor bro. There he hit me. Now I definitely need to chuck. Bam. Nice chugging out of the menu. Oh no I need to run away and chuck. No no no. Because I got hit and I need to chuck. You are so unhonorable attacking me while I chuck. Yeah whatever. People are still the biggest hypocrites in this game. <laughs> Well, you can just laugh about it. I got some nice builds finished and I can't wait to do more PvP sessions. So he will lose and I say thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. And I see you all in the next session. Bye bye.